to that question, the affirmative that the countries on the wrong track typically do support Trump. And when you ask people who support Trump, what do you think is the We're live, they folks. Are How are we doing today? Ready, ready for this debate? Slightly less safe. Good. Good. Right. Check the problems Just here. Better when you ask people, do you think we'll do better on the economy? So there's a lot of uh, unease, right, about what's going on in the world outside, uh, what's going on at the borders, and what's going on in the U.S. economy. I've mean, had a rather solid recovery, all things considered, if you look at those numbers, but there's still skepticism. Not all, country, not all parts of this country benefit from uh, the recovery from the recession as here. much as other parts. Big old debate. You're in 30 seconds away from this debate. Just think about this. As divided as the country is right now, we're going to have... By some estimates, it's gonna be fun. Million, you guys, uh, ready? Tuning in to watch this debate. So this is in some way. Frank ways, versus Hillary country, versus Donald. There we go, Here folks. We go. With Lester Holt, the moderator. Good evening from Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. I'm Lester Holt, anchor of NBC Nightly Oops. News. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. The participants tonight are Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. This debate is sponsored by the Commission on Presidential Debates, a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization. The Commission drafted tonight's format, and the rules have been agreed to by the campaigns. The 90 minute debate is divided into six segments, each 15 minutes long. Uh -huh. We'll explore three topic areas tonight achieving prosperity, <coughs> America's direction, and securing America. At the start of each segment, I will ask the same lead-off question to both candidates, and they will each have up to two minutes to respond. From that point until the end of the segment, we'll have an open discussion. Oh, yes, we will. The questions are mine and have not been shared with the commission or the campaigns. Uh -huh. The audience here in the room has agreed year. to remain silent so that we can focus on what the candidates are saying. I will invite you to applaud, however, at this Let's moment, great. I'm as we welcome the ready. candidates. You know, this is be Democratic fun. nominee for President of the United States, there Hillary Clinton, and Republican nominee for President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. All right. And I'm Frank Barris, and I'm going to debate them both. And this is going to be fun, folks. You guys ready for this? Oh, she's being nice. How are you, Donald? Wow. This is the start. This is just this. I mean, I'm adding a little something to it for you folks. But... <coughs> you guys ready? Well, I don't expect us to cover all the issues of this campaign tonight, but I remind everyone there are two more presidential debates scheduled. We are going to focus on many of the issues that voters tell us are most important, and we're going to press for specifics. Mm -hmm. I am honored to have this role, but this evening belongs to the candidates and the American people. Candidates, we look forward to hearing you articulate your policies and your positions, as well as your visions and your values. So, let's begin. Let's begin. We're calling this opening segment Achieving Prosperity, and central to that is jobs. There are two economic realities in America today. There's been a record six straight years of job growth, and new census numbers show incomes have increased at a record rate after years of stagnation. However, income inequality remains significant, and nearly half of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Beginning with you, Secretary uh, Clinton, why are you a better choice than your opponent to create the kinds of jobs that will put more money into the pockets of American workers? Well, thank you, Lester, and thanks to Hofstra for hosting us. The central question in this election is really what kind of country we want to be and what kind of future yeah, we'll build together. Today is my granddaughter's second birthday, oh, so I think about name. this a lot. <laughs> First, we have to build an economy that works for everyone, not just those at the top. Yeah, that the ones means that you've been we need rich. new jobs, good jobs, with rising incomes. I want ones us that to haven't been shipped out because of NAFTA. I want us to invest in your future. That yeah. means jobs in infrastructure, in advanced manufacturing, in innovation and technology, clean renewable energy. And small business then why do you support fracking? Jobs will come from small business. Oh, we also have energy. to this, make the, the fracking woman. Fairer. Want to that spread it around the world? Raising the national minimum wage, which you were against. Also guarantee, finally, equal pay for women's work. I also want to see more companies do profit sharing. If you help create the profits, you should be able to share in them, not just the executives at the top. And I want us to do more to support people who are struggling to balance family and work. I've heard from so many of you about the difficult choices you face, 
and the stresses that you're under. Yeah. So let's have paid family it's leave, up world. earned sick days. Let's be sure we have affordable child care and debt-free college. Yeah. How are we going to do it? We're going to do it Elect by having Bernie Sanders. the wealthy pay their oh, fair right. share and close the corporate loopholes. Finally, we tonight are on the stage together, Donald Trump and I. Uh-huh. This is uh, good. Donald, <laughs> it's good to be with you. You're a liar. First lie. Line We're going one. to have a debate <laughs> where we are one, huh? talking about the important issues facing our country. You have to judge us. Who can oh. shoulder the immense, awesome responsibilities of the presidency? Who Frank Barrett, this guy right here. Put into action the plans that will make your life better. I hope. Well, you that support I will the TPP, which will destroy our democracy. Doesn't make anyone's life better. Clinton, thank you, Mr. Trump. The same question oh, to you is about be putting money, more money, in the pockets of American workers. You have up to two he minutes. Support. Thank you, Lester. Oh. Uh, our jobs are fleeing the country. Yes. They're going to Mexico. They're going to many other countries. You look at what China is doing to our country in terms of making our product. They're devaluing their currency, and there's nobody in our government to fight them. And we have a very good fight, and we have a winning fight, because they're using our country as a piggy bank to rebuild China. And many other countries are doing the same thing. So we're losing our good jobs, so many of them. Well, we've lost when them. you look at what's happening in we've Mexico, the a friend of mine who builds plants said it's the eighth wonder of the world. They're building some of the biggest plants anywhere in the world, some of the most sophisticated, some of the best plants. With the United States, Big plant. as you huge, said, huge not plants. so much. So Ford is leaving. You see that, their small car division leaving. Thousands of jobs leaving Michigan, leaving Ohio. They're all leaving, and we can't allow it to happen anymore. As far as child care is concerned and so many other things, I think Hillary and I agree on that. Uh, we probably disagree a little bit as to uh, numbers and amounts and what we're going to do, but perhaps we'll be talking about that later. But we have to stop our Start jobs up from being stolen from us. We have to stop <laughs> our employees from leaving the United States and with it firing all of their people. All you have to do is take a look at carrier air condition in uh, Indianapolis. They left fired 1,400 people. They're going to Mexico. So many hundreds and hundreds of because companies of are doing this. We cannot let it happen. Under my plan, I'll be reducing taxes tremendously from 35% to 15% for companies, small and big businesses. That's going to be a job creator like we haven't seen since Ronald Reagan. It's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. Companies will come, they will build, they will expand, new companies will start, and I look very, very much forward to doing it. What about all the money the companies put offshore? And we have and to close stop those these countries from stealing our companies and our jobs. Secretary Clinton, would you like He's to talking stop? about they all Well, I think that trade is an important issue. It of is. course, we are 5% of the world's population. We have to trade with the other 95%. And we need to have smart, fair trade deals. We also, though, need to have a tax system that rewards work and not just financial transactions. Yeah, exactly. And the kind of plan that Donald has put forth would be trickle-down economics all yep. over again. His, fact, his plans for the billionaires, the folks, whether you version, believe his populist bullshit or not. Uh, the top percent of the people in this country that we've ever had. I call it trumped up trickle-down because that's exactly what Ooh, it would be. But she thought that of that one. That is not how we grow trumped up, the economy. Down. We just have a different Hashtag view up, about down. what's best for growing the economy. How we make investments that will actually produce uh, jobs and rising TPP. incomes. Cancel NASA. I think we come at it from somewhat different perspectives. Yeah, uh, I understand that. You know, Donald uh, was very fortunate in his life, and that's all to his benefit. Uh, he started his business with $14 million borrowed from his father, and he really believes Let's make it personal, because that, that's not going to get ugly later. The wealthy people, the better off we'll be, and that everything will work out from there. I don't buy that. You do buy that. I have a different <laughs> experience. My father was a small businessman. He worked really hard. He printed drapery fabrics on long tables where he pulled out those fabrics, and he went down with a silk screen and dumped the paint in and took the squeegee and kept going. Wow. And so what I believe is the more we can do for the middle class, the more we can invest in the you, TPP your will finish destroying your the middle skills, class. Your future, NAFTA started the it. better we will 
will be off and the better will grow. That's the kind of economy Things I that want come out us of this to see again. Let me follow up on Mr. Trump if I can. You've talked about support creating 25 the facts million of jobs. Her positions. You promised to bring, bring back millions of, uh, of jobs for Americans. How are you going to bring back the industries that have left this country for cheaper labor overseas? How specifically are you going to tell American manufacturers that you have to come back? Well, for one thing, uh, and before we start on that, my father uh, gave oh, me geez, a small there we go. loan in 1975, and that's I moved into a company that's worth many, many billions of dollars with some of the greatest assets in the world. And I say You've that increased that wealth kind of less than if it had been, had been put in just a mutual fund. We don't know what we're doing when it comes to devaluations and all of these countries all over the world, especially China. They're the, the best, the best ever at it. What they're doing to us is a very, very... Oh, no. thing. So we have to do that. We have to renegotiate our trade deals. And Lester, they're taking our jobs, they're giving incentives, they're doing things that, frankly, we don't do. Uh, let me give you the example of Mexico. They have a VAT tax. We're in a different system. When we sell into Mexico, there's a tax. When they sell in automatic, 16% approximately. When they sell into us, there's no tax. It's a defective agreement. It's been defective for a long time, many years, but the politicians haven't done anything about it. Now, in all fairness to uh, Secretary Clinton, yes, is that okay? Good. I want you to be very happy. Wow. It's very important to me. But in all fairness to Secretary Clinton, <laughs> when she started talking about this, it was what do really I call very you? recently. She's been doing this for 30 years. And why hasn't she made the agreement better? The NAFTA agreement... Because she supports the oligarchy. Because, of because the she supports the oligarchy. Many other reasons, but just because of the fact. Let me interrupt just a moment. Secretary Clinton and others, politicians, should have been doing this for years. Not right you now. You should listen to Ross Perot back in 92. They should have been doing this for years. What's happened to our jobs and our sure. country and our economy generally is, look, we owe $20 trillion dollars. We cannot do because it. Because of George longer. Bush's Let's war and tax cut. How do you bring back, specifically Mostly. bring back jobs? American Can manufacturers, that? how do you make them bring the jobs back? Well, the first thing you do is don't let the jobs leave. The companies are leaving. I could name, I mean, there are thousands of them. They're leaving, and they're leaving in bigger numbers than ever. And what you do is you say, fine, you want to go to Mexico or some other country, good luck. We wish you a lot of luck. But if you think you're going to make your air conditioners or your cars or your cookies or whatever you make and bring them into our country without a tax, you're wrong. And what you say you're going to have Come on. to tax them coming in. And our politicians never do this because they have special interests and the special interests want those companies to leave because in many cases they own the companies. So... What I'm saying is we can stop them from leaving. We have to stop them from leaving. And that's a big, big factor. Let me let Secretary Clinton Well, here. let's stop for a second and remember where we were eight years ago. We had the worst financial crisis, the Great Recession, the worst since the 1930s. That was set up by Bill that Clinton getting rid of Glass-Steagall. Because of tax policies that slash taxes on the wealthy, failed to invest in the middle class, took their eyes off of Wall Street and created a perfect storm. Off Wall Street. In fact, Obama Donald was prosecuted one of the no one for the housing crisis. He said and you won't back either. in 2006, gee, I, I hope it does collapse because then I can go in and buy some and make some money. Well, it did collapse. That's called nine, business, but nine million <laughs> it's called business, lady. Nine million people lost their They're jobs. Sad. Five million people lost their homes and thirteen trillion dollars in family wealth was wiped out. Because now, your husband got rid of the banking regulations which that stopped that shit from happening for 80 years. Easy. So we're now on the precipice of having a potentially much better economy, but the last thing we need to do is to go back to the policies that failed us in the first place. Independent That's experts true. have looked at what I've proposed and looked at what Donald's proposed, and basically they've said <coughs> this, that if his tax plan which would blow up the debt by over $5 trillion and would, in some instances, disadvantage crazy. middle class it's families all for the compared billionaires, to the wealthy, were to go way. into effect, we would lose 3.5 million jobs and maybe have another recession. They've looked at my plans and they've said, okay, if we can do this, and I intend to get it done, we will have 10 million more new jobs. 
because we will be making investments where we can grow the economy. Take clean energy. Some country is going to be the clean energy superpower of the 21st and that century. Should be about, if it was us. Donald thinks that climate change is a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese. I think it's real. Uh, and I you spread it around science. the world. I do not say that. And I think it's yeah, important he does that, say that we Shut up, Donald. grip this and deal with it both at home and abroad. And here's what we can do. We can deploy a half a billion more solar panels. We can have enough clean energy to power every home. We can build a new modern electric grid. That's a lot of jobs. That's a lot of new economic Great. activity. So I've tried to be very specific. Too bad we had to do that fracking thing first and, and destroy do. the whole and planet. I am determined real quick. That and now we're going to do get this. The economy really moving again. Building on the progress we've made over the last eight years, but never going back to what got us in trouble in the first place. Mr. Trump, she talks about solar panels. Uh, we invested in a solar company in our country. That was a disaster. They lost plenty of money on that one. That, now, look, he's, that that's I propaganda. That company, there's a whole different story to that. Energy. <laughs> but we're that's Republican lot, propaganda, lot son. Our energy policies are a disaster. Because our country is like losing it. so much in terms of energy, in terms of paying off our debt. You can't do what you're looking to do with 20 trillion in debt the obama but he's gonna make the debt worse the time they've come in is over 230 years worth of debt and he's topped it he's doubled it in a course of almost because of the war years, and, and the tax cut that, that were put in place so i will tell you this uh, we have to do a much better job at keeping our jobs and we have to do a much better job at giving companies incentive to build new companies or to expand because they're not doing it and all you have to do is look at michigan and look at ohio and look at all of these places where so many of their of their jobs and their companies are just leaving they're gone and hillary i just ask you this it's happened in a long time it's NAFTA, this, wasn't it yeah it's around NAFTA years. time why are you the just middle class just got sucked dry. Right now, for 30 years you've been doing it, and now you're just starting to think of solutions. <laughs> well, well, actually, I will bring, excuse me, I will bring back jobs. Ooh. You can't bring back jobs. Well, actually, um, I have thought about this quite a bit. Yeah, for 30 and years. I have, uh, well, not quite that long. Uh, I think my husband did a pretty good job in the 1990s. I think a lot about what yeah, he worked did and how we can make it work. Then he again. sold out the economy. New jobs, a balanced budget. Which is the single and worst trade deal comes, ever approved in this country. Incomes went up for everybody. Manufacturing jobs went up also in the 1990s, if we're actually going to look at the facts. Yeah, and they have to when set up what happened later. I had a number of trade deals that came before me, and I held them all to the same test. Will they create jobs in America? Will they raise incomes in America? And are they good for our national security? Some of them I voted for. The biggest one, a multinational one known as CAFTA, I voted against. And because I hold the same standards as I look at all of these trade deals. But let's not assume The TPP that will create courts that will destroy our democracy and she's for it. I think it is a part of it, and I've said what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a special prosecutor. We're going to enforce the trade deals we have, and we're going to hold people accountable. When I was Secretary of State, we actually increased American exports globally 30%. We increased them to China 50%. So I know how to that really the fracking. work to get new jobs and to get exports that help to create more new jobs. Right. Well, you haven't done it in 30 years or 26 years. Well, I, you I've been it. a senator, You Donald, haven't done it. You and haven't I done. have been a and Secretary of State, and I have Your done. husband signed yeah. LAFTA, which was one of the worst things that ever happened well, to the manufacturing your industry. That is your you opinion. go to New England, you go to Ohio, Pennsylvania, you go anywhere you want, Secretary Clinton, and you will see devastation where manufacturing is down 30, 40, sometimes 50 percent. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed any Anywhere, but yep. certainly ever signed in this country and now you want to approve trans-pacific partnership you were totally in favor of it then you heard what i was saying how bad it is and you said no she heard what that to me but you know that if you did win you would approve that and that will be almost as bad as nafta nothing will ever well, top nafta that that is just no the tpp is worse than that i uh was against it once it was finally negotiated and the terms were laid out. I wrote about that in... You called it the uh, gold I standard. About, well, I You called I, it the gold standard of trade deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No. And then you heard what I said about it and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the facts. The facts are, <laughs> yeah. I did say, I hoped it would be 
a good deal, but when it was negotiated, not. which I was not responsible for, I concluded it wasn't. I wrote about that. So is it President Obama's fault? Is it President Obama's fault? Even announced. Look, there Secretary, are is it President there? Obama? Obama's Ooh. fault. There are because he's pushing. It. There are different views about what's good for our country, our economy, and our leadership in the world. And I think it's important to look at what we need to do to get the economy going again. That's why I said new jobs with rising incomes, investments, not in more tax cuts that would add five trillion dollars to the debt. But you have but no in plan. Educate. Oh, I do. Secretary, in fact, you I have, have no plan. Yes, she's going to support the TPP. It. It's called Stronger Together. You can pick it up That's tomorrow. No matter what she and says, she clearly supports the or TPP. Or in an airport near you. Uh, but oh, now she's it's selling because her book. I see this. We need to have strong growth. Fair growth, sustained The TPP growth. will destroy our democracy. It creates courts that will balance invalidate our laws. at home and the responsibilities at business. So we have a very robust set of plans. And people who have looked robust. at both of our plans have concluded that mine would create 10 million jobs and yours would lose us three and a half million jobs and explode You are going debt, to approve one of the biggest tax cuts in recession. history. You are going to approve one of the biggest tax increases in history. Oh, get up there. You are going to drive business out. Your regulations are a disaster and you're going to increase regulations all over the place. And by the way, my tax cut is the biggest since Ronald Reagan. Yeah. I'm very proud of it. You know, I shouldn't be it proud of it. It's for the billionaires. No matter what you jobs. say, it's for but the billionaires. Regulations. You are going to regulate these businesses out of existence. When I go around... He wants to get rid of the estate tax. This, the most of. efficient tax and you can think around, of. Despite the tax cut, the thing, the things that business and that people like the most is the fact that I'm cutting regulation. You have regulations on top of regulations. He's going to do what big business wants. That's what he means by cutting regulations. Companies are going out of business, and you want to increase the regulations and make them even worse. I'm going to cut regulations, but I'm going to cut taxes, big league, and you're going to raise big taxes, big league. End of story. Let me get you to pause right there because we're going to yes, move into the next. That, yeah, that, that, can't, that can't be left to stand. Take, take you know, seconds, I, I kind on. of assumed that there would be a lot of these charges and claims. And so Facts. we have taken uh, the homepage of my website, HillaryClinton.com, and we've turned it into a fact checker. So if you want to see in real time uh, what the facts are, please go and take a look. Because and take a look at mine also. Not say. add a penny to the debt. And your plans would add $5 trillion to the debt. What I have proposed would cut regulations and streamline them for small businesses. What I have proposed would be paid for by raising taxes on the wealthy because they have made all the gains in the economy. And I think it's time that the wealthy and corporations paid their fair share to support this. Well, country. you just opened the next segment. Well, look, can I just finish? I think I should. You go to our website right here, and you take a look at her segment. website. Oh She's going to raise taxes $1.3 trillion. Mr. Trump, and look at her website. You know what? It's no different than this. She's telling us how to fight ISIS. Just go to her website. She tells you how to fight ISIS on her website. I don't think General Douglas MacArthur would like that right, too the much. Next, the, next, the next segment, we're continuing well, the subject. Well, at least I have a plan to fight ISIS. No, no. You're telling the enemy she everything you want to do. She created ISIS. No, we're not. See, you're no, telling the enemy everything you want to do. No wonder you've been fighting. No wonder she got rid of Gaddafi in Libya. Killed the life. sitting head of state in Libya. Well, that, that's a, that's, go to the Please, the fact checkers, get Folks, to work. You are unpacking a lot here, and we're still on the issue of uh, achieving prosperity. And I want to talk about uh, taxes. Uh, the fundamental good. difference want, between good. the two of you concerns the wealthy. Secretary Clinton, you're calling for a tax increase in the wealthiest Americans. I'd like you to further defend that. And Mr. Trump, you're calling for tax cuts for the wealthy. I'd like you to defend that. And this next two-minute answer goes to you, Mr. Trump. Well, I'm really calling for major jobs because the wealthy are going to create tremendous jobs. They're going to expand their companies. They're going to do a tremendous job. I'm getting rid of the carried interest provision. And if you really look, it's not a tax. It's really not a great thing for the wealthy. It's a great thing for middle class. It's a great thing for companies to expand and when these people are going to put billions and billions of dollars into companies and when they're going to bring two and a half trillion dollars back from overseas where they can't bring the money back because politicians like secretary clinton 
the money back because the taxes are so onerous you have and to the get that money back. Tape. So All that money so they stashed in the so Cayman what Islands. doing is they're leaving our country and they're, believe it or not, leaving because taxes are too high and because some of them have lots of money outside of our country and instead of bringing it back and putting the money to work because they can't work out a deal to... And everybody agrees it should be brought back. Instead of that, they're leaving our country to get their money because they can't bring their money back into our country because of bureaucratic red tape, because they can't get together. Because we, we have a president that can't sit them around a table and get them to approve something. And here's the thing. Republicans and Democrats agree that this should be done. Two and a half trillion. I happen to think it's double that. It's probably five trillion dollars that we can't bring into our country, Lester. And with a little leadership, you'd get it in here very quickly. And it could be put to use on the inner cities and lots of other things. And it would be beautiful. But we have no I don't see him leadership. going after that. And honestly, that starts with I mean, Secretary Clinton. What true. I just don't see All him right, doing it. You have two minutes of the same question to defend up the other tax increases on the wealthiest American, Secretary Clinton. I, I have a feeling that by the end of this evening, I'm going to be blamed for everything that's ever happened. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Jo you know, ju just just join, uh, join the debate by uh, saying more crazy things. Now... Let me say, there's nothing crazy is about not letting our companies case. bring their money it, back into oh this. God. This is uh, Secretary Clinton's two minutes, yes. please. Yeah, well, let's start the clock again, Lester. Um, we've looked at your tax proposals. I don't see changes in the corporate tax rates or the kinds of proposals you're referring to that would cause the repatriation, bringing back of money that's stranded overseas. I happen to that you support didn't that. I happen to I happen to support that in a way that will actually work to our benefit. But when I look at what you have proposed, you have what is called now the Trump loophole because it would so advantage you and the business you do. You've proposed a, an name? approach First that ever. has a that four this is our, this billion is dollar Clinton's tax minutes. benefit <laughs> this for is your Clinton's family. And when you look at what much, you are proposing, it is, Lester, as I said, He's trumped up dick, the trickle down. He's trickle down did not work. Trickle it got us into work. the mess we were in in 2009. <coughs> Slashing taxes on the wealthy hasn't worked. And a lot of really smart, wealthy people know that. And they are saying, hey, we need to do more to make the contributions we should be making to rebuild the middle class. I don't think top-down works in America. I think building the middle class, investing in the middle class, making college debt-free so more young people can get their education, helping people refinance their tax, their, their debt from college at a lower rate. Those are the kinds of things that will really boost the economy. About canceling their debt like we canceled the big companies' debt. Inclusive growth is what we need in America, not the more advantages trillions. for people at the very top. Mr. Trump, we're typical talking. politician, all talk, no action, sounds good, doesn't work, never going to happen. Our country is suffering because people like Secretary Clinton have made such bad decisions in terms of our jobs and in terms of what's going on. Now, look, we have the statement. worst revival of an economy since the Great Depression. And believe me, we're in a bubble right now. Yes, we are. And the only thing that looks good is the stock market. But if you raise interest right. rates even a little bit, that's going to come crashing down. Yep. We are in a big, fat, ugly bubble. And we better be awfully careful. And we have of course a it's going to crash again. That's, that's what they do. Political things. This Janet Yellen of the Fed. The Fed is doing political by keeping the interest rates at this level. And believe me, the day Obama goes off and he leaves and he goes out to the golf course for the rest of his life to play golf, when they raise interest rates, we're going to see some very bad things happen because the Fed is not doing their job. The Fed is End being more the Fed. Or at the very least, audit the, the Fed. Clinton. Can we audit Mr. the Trump, Fed, we're please? We're talking about the burden that Americans have to pay, yet you have not released your tax returns. Oh, and the reason nominees have, have released their returns for decades is that voters will know if their potential president owes money to, who he know, owes it to, and any business conflicts. Uh, don't Americans have a right to know if there are any conflicts of interest? I don't mind releasing. I'm under a routine audit, and it'll be released, and as soon as the audit's finished...